Okay, what we're going to do is look at the effects in GeoGebra of working with a quadratic equation in general form. And so I'm just going to set up three sliders, one of them for the coefficient of the x squared, which I'm going to go from negative 10 to 10. And a second slider, I'm still on sliders, so this is slider B, and again I'm going to go from negative 10 to 10, leaving the increment 0.1. And third one, I'm just going to let that one go the way it does from negative 5 to 5. Alright, so we're looking at the general form of a quadratic equation, which would be a x squared plus bx plus c. And what we're looking at is uh, taking that general quadratic equation and looking at how a affects the quadratic equation holding b and c steady, and the same thing for c and then back to b. All right, so I'm going to create my uh, quadratic equation now. All right, I'm going to turn that off. And my quadratic equation is going to be a, oh, I'm going to make it f of x, f of x, make it a function. Equals ax squared. To get the squared, I'm going to have to go caret 2 plus bx plus c. And I do have a slight issue here. I need to make sure the a times the x squared, that both ax is not thrown in parentheses and squared, so I must either put a multiplication sign in there or a space. I'm going to choose for emphasis to put a multiplication sign in there, which is the asterisk. All right, and if you're uncomfortable with the bx, you could do the same thing there. Uh, that really doesn't typically cause an issue. All right, so now I press return, and there's my quadratic equation. All right. And if I want to investigate, I want to go back to the arrow up front to move it. And look at what happens when I slide A around B and C. All right. So we're going to let B equal 0. Cancel that. B equals 0 and c equals zero as well. All right, and there's my general quadratic equation. Now, I'm, just to make it a little bit easier to look at, I'm going to go to that function and give it a little color, like red, and make it a little bit thicker all right, <clears throat> and I'm going to <clears throat> put some uh, points on it. I'm going to put the point on uh, where uh, a is 2, and I'm sorry, when the uh, point where I have the x value equaling 2, and the y value equaling f of 2. That's just to get one extra point so that we can look at that in a, a bit. And that put that point a way down. And so what we're going to do is investigate first what happens as we uh, move a. All right, so I'm going to center my 
red a little bit. And now I'm letting B equals zero, C equals zero, and I'm going back to my arrow key. And as I move my slider, you see large, like the number 10, A values, that's the coefficient of the x squared, makes it very steep and narrow as far as the parabola. As we start getting smaller numbers as the lead coefficient, it starts to widen out. There's the 1, often the default to look at relationship. And now if I go to values that are between 1 and 0, it gets wider or flatter. Now, when I actually hit 0, the x squared term drops out, and really I have the equation of a line at that point, or here is actually, because the other values are 0, it's really y equals 0. As I start going to negative a values, all right, negative values that are between 0 and negative 1 give me that wide parabola. And as my negative values get to be above negative, um, below negative ones, like negative 1.1, negative 2, etc., it becomes very steep, but it's now opening down. So negatives open it down, positives open it up, large numbers make it steep and narrow, same way when you're negative, and then numbers that are close to zero make it wide. And then basically when a is zero, we've gone out of actually having a quadratic equation. All right, so I'm now going to push this a value to 1 and hold that constant while I look at what the c value does. All right, so holding a and b constant as I increase the value of c, remember, c is just that value that's being added on, all right, and as I add on larger numbers, the whole parabola doesn't change shape, it just simply moves up. When c is 0, its vertex is at 0. When c is negative, it moves down. So there's some other dynamics involved when b starts changing values, but c just basically moves it up and down. Now, I'm going to start it up here and let C equal 1 so we can see what happens when we start focusing on B. To focus on B, all right, it's kind of it's a little hard to follow where it's going. So what I'm going to do is put a point on the vertex. Now we're going to keep it facing up the whole time, so to get that point in the vertex, that's going to be the minimum, so I'm starting with capital M, I, N, all right, and then it says of the function start value, end value. So I go and get my bracket, all right, and the function is F of X. And got to jump outside of that parentheses and put a comma in there and comma and basically my grid is between negative 10 and 10 so certainly it's going to find it in that range so I'm going to go with a negative 10 comma another 10 as my interval and return and I'm going to now focus on that point B and first of all I'm going to change its color by going to object properties and color Oh, I think I'm going to go with a blue. All right. And I'm also going to turn the trace on so we can follow where that point B goes when we start moving the lowercase b slider. All right. So I'm closing that. Tapping on B again. Tap and hold. And now I'm going to turn trace on. i to make sure it's on. Sure it is. Okay. And so now I'm going to move the B slider. 
And first I'm going to move it to the right. And I'm tracing the path of the vertex. And then when I start moving it to the negative lowercase b values, and I'm just going to get this line a little bit more solid with the trace. And lo and behold, maybe not exactly what you thought was going to occur, but it's kind of a unique find. The B value, basically, if it's acting by itself, it creates a uh, reflection in the vertex uh, for the movement. All right? So it creates a parabola of movement which is uh, basically the reflection of the original parabola, parabola and its reflection in the uh, line. Well, let's, let's see if it's the line or the point. All right, so when I get positive values for B, it's moving the vertex in the negative direction. And when I have negative values for B, it's pushing the vertex in the positive direction and I'm really talking about the positive direction of the x-axis and the negative direction of the x-axis. It's also moving uh, down all right, and creating this parabolic path. Okay, so we saw A moves it, opens up if it's positive, opens down if it's negative. Makes it real steep, uh, the same way a uh, steep slope would, and makes it narrow when there are large numbers for A, and basically wider when there's numbers for A that are between 0 and 1 or 0 and negative 1. C simply moves it up or down and B causes it to the vertex to move in this parabolic path. All right, so let's add a little excitement here. Animation on. Animation on. Animation on. And so you can follow the vertex as all of these are just jumping around all over the place. And, of course, the vertex falls out because we had it as a minimum. So you're not going to see it until A comes back to be positive. All right, done deal.